In this video, I actually watched the two sequels to the original Aladdin, Return of Jafar and King of Thieves. Today, let's talk about it. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Hi everyone, I'm here with my mom. Hi. Uh, we watched Aladdin and Aladdin Return of Jafar for the very first time. So we're gonna talk about it. I wanna hear your thoughts, your thoughts first and then I am gonna share my thoughts and then we can talk. Okay, perfect. I was super familiar with the original Aladdin, obviously. Came out, saw it in the theater when it first came out. Was a little skeptical about this second one. Usually, you know, nothing's like the original. Yeah. So, overall, I would say I, I went into it being a little bit critical and I, and so it was easy to see things right off the bat. Yeah. I just felt like mm, definitely. it didn't seem like it was even original, like Disney quality, just even in the animation and stuff like that. Um, I saw some inconsistencies right away as far as, you know, Aladdin himself. It The story doesn't start with where the original ended. Aladdin's still kind of like a, a, street, a rat. street rat. Yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. Like still yeah. stealing, still in the same kind of clothes, which was a little confusing because I feel like the original ends and he's like gonna be with Jasmine, yeah. gonna He's live in a palace kind of royalty, and stuff like yeah. that, right? Mm -hmm. So that part I didn't really it didn't really jive with me to understand like where is this in the yeah. whole like chronological time sequence yeah. of the story. They definitely yeah, they definitely backtracked with the status of Aladdin from the last movie to this movie. It definitely felt like a step back, like they were almost restarting everything. Yeah. And I also noticed that the animation is definitely a downgrade, I would For say. Sure. It felt like it was someone's project who just liked the story of Aladdin. Yeah. And they wanted to just tell something else about yeah, it. Yeah, like, like a fan, like a fan fiction. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. So, like I said, how it felt like they were backtracking. That also means that they bring back Jafar. So, there's Jafar shenanigans. The whole reason Jafar escapes is because. Iago or Iago is that his name? Yeah. Is Iago. able is able to just like escape the lamp without anything happening to him. He can just pop well, out of the lamp. Right. So if you remember in the original, um, at the end of the movie, Jafar gets kind of tricked into because of what his wish is. He gets yeah, tricked into becoming of kind of a a dark sultan genie that gets confined to yeah. a lamp. Because I'm pretty sure he said, "I wish to be." be a genie because genies are like the most powerful right. entities on the yes. planet. But he, and so then yeah. the then the cuffs come on him and he gets sucked into the lamp, this black lamp that's yeah. supposed to be kind of, mm -hmm. and he takes Iago with him. So in this movie, Iago escapes the like just gets out of the lamp. Like physically it's not like he is a ghost and like kind of right. he physically like is able to crawl out of it, which is just weird. Uh one yeah. thing that we didn't mention too is <clears throat> Uh, Gilbert Gottfried is still the voice of Iago. Mm -hmm. Aladdin, I believe, is still the same. Jasmine, Jasmine is different. Is not. And then the biggest miss. Obviously, you can't always have the biggest stars every yeah. single time. But it's just not the same without Robin Williams as the genie. And he for sure yeah. is not. And yeah. so it just comes up short. Because who can fill his shoes, right? Yeah. Not even Will Smith. Well, that's, that, that's another episode. Yeah. <laughs> but even that was better than this. So the genie in the, like we said for Jafar, the genie has the shackles on too, but he's free. Yeah, so that part was a little confusing too. It didn't no. seem quite as consistent because the Robin Williams genie character from the original, um, the character himself is in this second movie. And he's been traveling, you realize. He's not in the very beginning of this second movie. He comes yeah. in to mm -hmm. the story. And he's been traveling and talks about how sad he is that he um, didn't have anyone to do it with him. Even though he's free, he didn't have anyone to travel with him. Um, but he is wearing the genie shackles, which doesn't make sense. Because that was the whole point. Like, they yeah. came off at the end of the original movie. I don't know. I um, ba backtracking. He he wore backtracking. Right, right. Yeah. So and they explained in the first movie in the original that that is the sign of being a genie, right? Yeah. It's like that's you're literally never your his own change. Master. Yeah. I guess uh, we'd like to tighten up on what the genie rules are. How are they supposed mm -hmm. to operate? That yep. would be a good question, yep. right? Like, yep. what constitutes a genie? What keeps you as a yeah. genie? Why are you wearing the gold bracelets if you're not yeah. a genie? 
We have a lot of Matt questions. Matt, Kat, if you're there, help us out. That's what, the, these are questions we need to answer. We have questions. Yes. Yeah. I was genuinely tricked when I figured out that Jasmine was not Jasmine and it was Jafar disguising as oh, Jasmine. Yeah. Yeah. Because Jasmine was like, Blacklist. I hate you, Ryan. You betray a, uh, what did she say? It was something yeah, about because she said you lied to me and I thought I could trust you, which would be something that would be very reasonable because of what had just happened. But she, but she also said like you need you need to be put to death or something. Oh yeah, she said but, we're gonna have you beheaded yeah, in the morning yeah, or whatever. Yeah, PG movie. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but uh, he was watching it with yeah, me. It was uh -huh, okay. Yeah, I got it. She she got that common sense media. That's definitely fun. Okay. Overall, what would you give it? I would give it a two out of ten. Okay. Uh, I'm not watching it ever again. Yeah, but. I might be I might be a little bit more generous and bump it up to a three out of ten for me, but not one that I would feel the need to watch again. Which I don't feel that way about the original. Love it. Yeah, Good that's top three time. top three great Disney music. movies for sure. Oh, Aladdin is a good one though. Mm -hmm. Great music, lots to mm -hmm. visually exciting. Yes. Mm -hmm. And obviously this movie is not so. But, Not as much. Yeah. Sure. So three out of ten. Yeah. Two out of ten. Yeah. That's gonna wrap it up. Thank you for coming. Yeah. And I'm gonna move on to the next segment, which is on Aladdin and the King of Thieves. So. I did not sit through yeah, that one and watch uh, it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you didn't that's have to you. bear the pain. <laughs> that's just me. That's and I don't me. feel the need to have to watch it either. Yeah. That's what's so great about it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So. Thanks. Thank you for that's coming. Fine. Yes. Yeah. I'll I'm see glad I was you. Able to be your PG. At dinner time. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. Yeah. Now that she's gone. Right off the bat, I noticed that Robin Williams is back. While I was watching this, I was wondering why he even came back, especially since he didn't return in Return of Jafar. But upon research, I discovered this. In September 1995, it was confirmed that Robin Williams would reprise the role of Genie reportedly for $1 million salary after he received an apology from Joe Roth for Disney breaching an agreement not to use his voice to merchandise products inspired by Aladdin. Pretty much, he didn't like that people were using his voice for the merchandise and products that came out of Aladdin. Bottom line though is he is back. Honestly, he's still pretty strong here, but I think that's just a given. There's an opening song slash musical number in this movie called party in Agrabah, and I actually enjoyed it quite a bit. It's catchy, and it gives us a little bit of insight into the status of the characters at this point. The antagonists in this movie, the 40 Thieves, gotta be the stupidest. They're supposed to be sneaky, but they plan on stealing this big staff thing on the wedding day when everyone is there and on high alert. Their plan entails releasing an elephant into the room to cause a distraction. These dudes are more like terrorists than sneaky thieves. Why in the world did they make Jasmine's eyes so freaking big? Like her design has declined so much since the first movie. Moses parts the Red Sea, I mean King of Thieves parts the ocean. To be honest, it looks pretty cool. A lot of the stuff in this movie looks really cool. Did you know if parrots lose their tails, they can just put them back on? How bad is it? <laughs> Oh, this is attractive. When Aladdin's father got revealed as the King of Thieves, I out loud said when I was watching it, That guy looks like Mr. Fantastic. Can't wait for, uh... The seam to play Mr. Fantastic in 2062 when Marvel Phase 12 comes out. Aladdin's father does not seem to care that he found his son after so many years. He's just like, oh, that's cool. Then he has the audacity to put him in a dangerous combat challenge almost five seconds after they reunited. He gets worried when Aladdin is about to die on the edge of a cliff. Like, what did you think was gonna happen? He's also like, I'm glad you killed my colleague. I didn't like him very much. At that point, Aladdin should have just left. I understand that it's your father and you've been searching for him for years and years and years, but he is an advocate for murder and killing 
and that's just red flags. The genie has a weird obsession with turning him and other people into Disney characters. Like it was funny like one or two times, but then it got way too meta and way too weird. The genie even created a super laser to defend Agrabah from invaders. This is just, oh my, this is so weird. Most of the music in both movies, especially the genie's numbers, feels like excuses to just have musical numbers. The ones that actually add to the plot are the ones I actually like the most. The rest of the story progresses pretty much how I expected. Aladdin's father realizes that his son is the treasure of his heart. And then he goes to his wedding. They even have that like cliche in movies where someone like throws something and they're like, oh, catch bro. And then it's like in slow motion. And I I'll just show you. Here, catch. Unlike the previous movie, this one actually isn't trying to be anything like the original movie. It's doing its own thing, and I actually appreciate that quite a bit, so it's a little bit better than Return of Jafar. But overall, it's still pretty bad. In that case, I'll be giving Aladdin and the King of Thieves a 3 out of 10, a slight improvement. That was the video guys. If you want to see more videos like this, there's actually a playlist down in the description for you. Last week's video is on the left, and subscribe on the right to stay tuned for more videos like this. I might actually make this a series. Thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.